Our Kids, When Accidents Happen on ABC 27 is presented by Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. A concussion is a brain injury that can happen in any contact sport. A Dauphin County teenager knows that all too well and Deborah Pinkerton has that story. 19-year-old Brad Hoffer holds his jersey proudly. Ice hockey became his passion when he was 13. It was fun. It was great. It was a non-contact league. There was no hitting. It was just, just a good team game. I remember I think it was my, my third game. But I finally got comfortable with things and I scored a goal. And it was like the most amazing thing ever. It was awesome. The next year, the game got a little rougher. It was different. It was a totally diff different game plan because you went out there just looking to hit people. At one game, Brad was the one hit. Well, we were pretty far away from him, so we couldn't tell what was going on. And they pulled him off the ice, and I remember him throwing up in a trash can. So I knew, you know, he's, he's got a concussion or something going on. After the game is really when it started, started hitting me. Just real big headache, and pupils are different sizes. I was hurting, got home, took a shower, and then we went to the emergency room. I had a CAT scan over there. And um, it said you have a concussion. It takes so much Tylenol every four or five hours and get a checkup in a couple of days. Brad didn't put his skates on until his headaches went away. But the headaches returned the next year, the result of two more concussions. I started doing research on it on the internet and found out about post concussive syndrome and about how the brain needs so much more time to heal after each hit. And even though the symptoms are gone, they still, it's still injured. This time, Brad took a nine-month break. He returned his junior year, and he says it was his best season ever until game six. I remember warm-ups, and that's about it. He had just gotten on the ice, and somebody shot the puck to him, and he was close to the board, and a kid checked him, and he fell onto the boards, and he hit his arm. So I was sitting there watching, and he never got up, and he never got up. I was really scared. I, didn't know what was going on and I was torn because as a mom I want to run across the ice and pick him up but <laughs> you know he's a grown boy you know he was 17 you know I had to sit there and wait and see what would happen you know and it just tore me up. Immediately Brad went to the emergency room at Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. Doctors diagnosed him with a concussion. There was a point where I was in the hall and a preacher came to talk to me and I lost it. <laughs> I didn't realize that it could have been that. And then it was just really scary to have that happen. He took a pretty good check and had a, about a two-minute loss of consciousness. Dr. Harry Bramley runs the concussion program at the medical center. After his fourth, fourth concussion, we had a long talk about playing hockey or playing contact sports. And after that event, um, he decided to retire from, from hockey. That was tough. That was very tough. What was even harder for Brad and his family was dealing with symptoms from post-concussion syndrome. Usually I was used to the headache being gone in a week and it just did not go away. It just kept persistent and persistent. Headaches every day for 13 long months and that wasn't it. He had a hard time with short-term memory, um, had a hard time with focusing for a period of time. He couldn't tolerate an entire day in school. He had to go half days. Um, that was really hard on him because he was a good student, he enjoyed it. There was classes he had to drop because he could no longer like calculus. He couldn't do that anymore. He couldn't concentrate. The other component uh, that he had, he had a problem with for some period of time was the um, uh, mood component, personality change, anxiety, depression, um, lack of motivation. I was just so frustrated at some point, you know, I was like, where's my kid, you know? Mom says it took some time, but her son is back. He's my sweet kid again. Brad has taken up another sport. He graduated from high school and is in college. But he says he'll never forget all of the memories wrapped up in the number 39. I would do everything the same over and over again. I would do the exact same thing. I would play the exact same way that I did. It was just, it was, it was hard giving it up. Well, Bradley's doctor, Dr. Bramley, joins us now in the studio. My heart goes out to the parents when I watch this, and you have to deal with that firsthand. But what exactly is a concussion? Everybody seems to have their own version of what that is. What that technically, what's sure. that mean? 
Well, it's a brain injury, and essentially we define it as any trauma that will cause a, a mental status change. So, but people need to know that it is certainly a brain injury. Now, in sports, some of these concussions can be severe. What are the symptoms you look for where you think it's big league trouble? Sure. Well, the athlete might have a headache. They might be dizzy, feel confused, uh, might be nauseated. They might throw up. Um, somebody observing the athlete, they might look confused, uh, be glassy-eyed, look dizzy, uh, have a difficult time walking. Now, do you have, is there a set best treatment, or do you take it on a case-by-case -case basis? Is there somebody on the sidelines or a coach, sure. is there something they can do right away? If there are signs and symptoms of a concussion during the contest, they should be removed right away. Um, and after that, it's essentially rest, both from a physical and a cognitive standpoint. So most of my patients are out of school for a period of time. They're certainly out of gym and, and out of sports until they're, until they're getting better. All right, thank you, Doctor. Appreciate all that. And let's check in with Deborah in the call center. Deborah? Thanks, Chuck. We've had a number of viewers ask this question. What resources are available in the community for injury prevention? The Hershey Children's Hospital, we partner and um, we're the lead agency for the Safe Kids Coalition, so we work with our community partners and we try to reach out and prevent the injuries. So on either by calling to the injury prevention line or to the website, again, families can learn about how to keep their kids safe. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Sue. And we'll send it back to you in the studio, Chuck. Thank you, Deborah. Well, Doctor, it seems that sports today, the teams are more cautious about letting an injured player return to the playing field and so on. When is it safe? Is there a time where you can say, you're good to go? When is it safe to go back and play again? Sure. In general, the athletes should be symptom-free at rest, symptom-free with heavy exertion, and if available, have a baseline or normal uh, neurocognitive test. Now, in Bradley's case, he had multiple concussions, Correct. and uh, obviously that's a concern, but why is that a concern? We know that individuals that have had a concussion or multiple concussions are at risk for more concussions, and if they do get subsequent concussions, they're more likely to have symptoms that linger on for a long period of time like Bradley had. Now, any moms and dads or coaches out there watching might be tuning in, and they deal with the kids on a regular basis in contact sports. What precautions can they take to better ensure that their kids are okay, prevent a concussion? One big thing is that if a concussion does occur, uh, they should not return to play or do high-risk activities until that concussion is completely resolved. I do see athletes that sometimes have a concussion and go back too soon and then get more serious injury. And, of course, play safe, wear protective helmets, and... Um, um, play by the rules as well. Play by the rules. That's always a good thing <laughs> to go with anyway. Dr. Bramley, thank you very much for joining us here tonight. You know, if you have a little one at home using a car seat, you don't want to miss our next story. We'll be right back.